that the film uh, was much more an homage to uh, the classic kind of Western as opposed to any attempt to modernize or um, deconstruct or revise the, the genre. The, the script lent itself to, the story lent itself to being told, I think, in a fairly straightforward way. And um, my own limitations as a director as well <laughs> had something to do with it. But, I wanted to shoot it very simply and to be able to take in the landscape and the people and see them in the time and the space in which the story was taking place and I didn't want to, I wanted the story, I wanted the audience to have to go into the world of the story as opposed to thrusting it into the audience's face with a bunch of close-ups and quick cuts and that kind of thing, so the style of it was very intentional. I certainly looked at many Western films, and many of which I had seen before. I, I don't know if any particular film was, uh, you know, I wasn't trying to model it after any particular film, but, you know, a lot of the, some of the great Ford films, My Dog and Clementine, uh, The Searchers, uh, The Man Who Shot Liberty Valance, of course, Leone's Once Upon a Time in the West, uh, one of my favorite movies, and uh, some of, like, um, the uh, Oxbow incident and things like that that are really character-driven kind of pieces uh, were, were somewhat influential, definitely. Can you hear me? Yeah. Uh, well, we had a good time working together on History of Violence, obviously, and um, I mean, the work was good, but also the relationship. We got along, and even though we were playing enemies, and one, Ed, uh, gave me the book when we were doing the promotion for History of Violence, the book. <laughs> uh, it seemed like a really interesting story, and as Ed says, character-driven. The other gentleman was talking about recent movies, like uh, things that Kevin Costner's done, Open Range, things like that. <clears throat> one of the things I like about Appaloosa as a story, and stories like Open Range, stories like um, Missouri Breaks, or I don't know, any number of movies that deal with the end of a period of seemingly <laughs> unlimited uh, possibilities in terms of landscape and behavior and all that. You know, Man of the West, Anthony Mann, you know, where there, people are getting a little bit older and the rules are changing, or at least suddenly there are rules and you can't just do whatever you want anymore. Uh, the frontier is closing were closed, that's interesting, and that's part of what I liked about this story, and that these characters were having to adjust to, to changes in society, and you know, when Rene Zellweger's character comes into this story, obviously, Ed's character has to change, and so do I, everything's changing. And I like stories that are, that are about what do you do when things change, when things go wrong, as they obviously you know, always do for everyone in life, you know? How do you deal with obstacles? Uh, that's one of the most interesting things to me about storytelling. And uh, I knew that, you know, Ed having done such a great job directing Pollock and, um, and, uh, and having worked with him as an actor, I knew he would pay attention to detail. You know, what makes him such a fine actor is the same thing that makes him such a good director. He pays attention to absolutely everything that's going on at all times. You know, when we were shooting, he didn't miss anything. He's very careful about detail, and, uh, and I knew it would be interesting. I would have a lot to react to. It's a good experience. Mm -hmm. The script that Robert and I wrote was based on a novel by Robert Parker called Appaloosa, the same name. And probably 85% of the dialogue from the, in the film is probably straight from the book. Um, and the irony, the sense of humor uh, that and the kind of dry humor that the two main characters have with each other is really Robert Parker's um, doing. Uh, Robert, not and I, we, we did add a number of things and we had some good ideas from Vigo and, and Jeremy Irons as well. But it was just inherent in the piece. I mean, these guys have been riding together for, you know, a dozen years <laughs> plus. They have a way of being with each other that, that they, first of all, they really enjoy each other's company and they have a way of speaking or not speaking where they're communicating with one another and part of the joy of that is the humor that they share and the way that they do that. 
In terms of the Ali character, the character that Renee Zellweger played, yeah, she really is a very interesting character. I mean, it's, to me, she's a, uh, it, it was a chance to depict a woman in, in that period of time and in a fairly honest way. I mean, she's abandoned, she's kind of left alone out here in the middle of nowhere. She, you don't know anything about her. Uh, of course, we came up with a backstory in our own minds for her, why she was there, where she was trying to get to, what had happened to her. But she shows up and she's really, a, you know, I didn't want to cast the woman, I wanted the woman not to be a, a kind of black widow character or a manipulative, um, calculating bitch, you know. She really needed to be a woman that was a survivor and trying to do what she needed to do in a situation to, to get along. So I uh, appreciate the fact that you felt she was uh, somewhere an original character.